take a guess? They made a fire going. So they definitely had a fire going, yeah? Definitely. Any ideas, parents, how they figured that out? What do you think? Okay, so sun definitely heats it, but they need to get it to a boil. Did you ever see a pot on the stove boiling when it's really bubbling and super, super hot? That's how they had to get that, that sap. So they had to figure out a way to do that. Any ideas? Like, well, the, what's it? Like, how did they heat it? How did they figure it out? How did they figure out that it would turn into this if they cooked it? Probably by accident spilled it on a cooking rock. So that's a great idea. So the answer is we are not sure. But <laughs> but there's a story. Do you guys like stories? I'm gonna tell you a story. There's a story about how they figured it out. And to tell this story, I am going to be your Native American chief. So I am in charge. And I know it's winter time and I know we can't we can't plant plants. There's no corn around to eat. There's no animals to eat, but there are deer because deer stay here. They don't go, migrate far away and they don't hibernate. So I know that there are some deer out there. So I'm gonna take this really cool tool. What is this, do you know? Ah. So it looks like an ax, but the Native Americans would call it something with a T. No, say it, it's okay, say it. Tomahawk, this was called a tomahawk. So they would take this tool and go out hunting. So I am gonna pretend today that I'm your chief and I'm gonna take my tomahawk. Now this one's a little bit different. This one is, is a little bit um, newer than that one, but it's sharper, so I'm gonna use it today. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go out hunting. So I go hunting all day. I try to find us food because I know you are all hungry and I'm your chief. So I hunt all day long and at the end of the day, I'm so upset because guess what? I didn't find anything. I tried and I tried, but I didn't find anything. So I'm frustrated and I take my tomahawk and I stick it in a tree and we all go to sleep. It's nighttime, it gets really cold this time of year in the night, right? We're hungry and it's cold and we sleep. And then we wake up to a beautiful day like today, a sunny day. And with the sun, I said, okay, I'm gonna go out hunting again. I take my tomahawk out of the tree and I go hunting. Now what tree do you think, just by accident, I put my tomahawk in? It was that special tree. What was that? You could just say it. Maple tree. Nice and loud, a maple tree. And then I made a big slice in the maple tree. What do you think started to pour out of it? What did we say was inside? Maple sap. Now, just by accident, at the bottom of that tree, there was a bowl. Does this look like a bowl you and I use? No. Not really, they had to make their own bowls. So just by accident, sitting at the bottom was this bowl that filled up with sap. Now, the Native Americans thought that it was just water, right? Because it looks a lot like water. In fact, it's mostly water and a tiny little bit of something sweet. What is sweet? Candy, what's in candy to make it sweet? Sugar. sugar, sugar. So there's a little bit of sugar and a lot of water. <coughs> so they thought that they found water in the trees. So they would take their old deer meat that they had saved up and they would soak it in the sap. And then they would cook it by putting it on hot rocks by the fire. Now what do you think happened when they cooked the sap that was on the deer yeah. meat? It turned into Sierra. They were so excited. Can you imagine? This was the first time they ever tasted Sierra. Do you think they were happy? Yeah. yeah. Do you guys like sugar? Yeah. And there's sugar in syrup. So syrup is a good thing. It's delicious. So they were really, really excited. So they came up with a plan. Now for the adults, the seven step plan is right behind us. It's the same step steps that have come all the way through the years. But for you guys, I'm gonna show you the steps. You ready? The first step is the Native Americans had to make all their tools. Do you think that was easy? No. Definitely not. If I told you guys to go into the woods and make a tomahawk, could you make one? No. Yes, we have a yes over there. He can make one. <laughs> I don't think I could make one because you have to start with what? What is this? A rock. That's a rock. Now, how do you sharpen a rock if you don't have any tools? What would you do? Another rock. Excellent. You'd use a
another rock. So you would try to break this so that it gets really sharp because we need it to be sharp. You might also scrape it on the ground and on another rock to make a point. Do you think that whole thing was easy? No. Definitely not. Then we'd have to find a handle. You couldn't just use any kind of wood because sometimes the wood would break. You had to find special wood like this. Look at this cool wood. It's like rubbery, like a rubber band. This wood is called hickory. So they had to find special hickory wood to use as a handle. So that wasn't easy. Then, this is when it gets crazy, are you ready? They had to find something in nature that was like string to hold it all together. Can you think of something in nature that might be like string? This is a really hard question. What do you think? Uh, Wait. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Be careful. Whoa. Rope? So rope. rope would be great, but they don't have rope. Because there's no such thing as a rope. Wait, don't do that. Grass? Okay, good idea. Grass is a good idea, don't but it turns out they tried it, and the grass wasn't strong enough. We need something stronger. Do you think mom and dads will know? Should we ask them? Do you know what is stronger? Vines. Okay, something called, this is going to be a new word, it's called sinew. Now, do you remember I said they would hunt for deer? Mm -hmm. So when they were hunting for the deer, they used every single part of the deer. They would eat the meat from the deer and they used something inside of the body that was like really strong string. And it is called sinew. And you know what? You and I have something like that in our body. It's our tendons. It attaches different parts of your body together because we're all attached, right? Otherwise, we'd all fall apart. There's pieces that keep us all together inside. That is what they would use for this. Now, the last thing to make your tomahawk is... Feathers. Good guess. That's just to make it look pretty. But yes, you need the feathers. Got to look pretty. But what do you see? Something on here that's really sticky that's kind of like glue. Glue? Okay, so yes, they needed something like glue. Something in nature that when you touch it, it's really sticky, it's hard to get off your hands. The seal. Syrup. So, okay, so close. Syrup is kind of like, uh, syrup, yeah, syrup is stickier, but this is something that we can just walk around and find outside. We didn't have to cook it or anything. I'm gonna give you a hint. Good guess, there weren't the European honeybees here at the time, so no, good guess. All right, I'm gonna give you a hint. Around Christmas time, people like to bring a tree into their house. A special kind of tree. Ma a maple tree. A maple tree, good guess. A pine tree. Did you ever touch a pine cone? Pine yes. cones have sap on them. That sap is so sticky. So they would use that as glue to put this all together. Really, really hard. Yeah, not easy. Then they would have to make hundreds and hundreds of bowls. And the way they would make a bowl is they take their tomahawk and they cut a log. Then they had to hollow this out. Now they'd have to find things that would be able to scrape this out. Can you think of things in nature that are sharp? Rocks. Rocks, excellent. What was that? Deer antlers. Excellent, deer antlers. Great tool, they could scrape out. Listen to that, how hard that is. Scrape out the wood, excellent job. Anything else in nature that's really sharp that could dig out? Branches. Branches, excellent, that's a great one. There might be some other answers over here. Look in this direction. Do you see anything sharp up here? <laughs> What do you say? Bones, animal bones. They are really, really strong, right? And they can dig out, so they would use animal bones. Anything else? Oh, um, porcupine, porcupines are the sticks of bones. Quills, the quills, that's a good idea. Yeah, if they had a porcupine, they might try that. What about this? Shell? Did you guys ever go walk on the beach and step on a shell? No. They are really hard and they're sharp, they hurt. An excellent tool for scraping, so you can dig, dig, dig really sharp. You could also claws. use this as a spoon if you were a Native American, mm. right? Because they didn't have spoons. What was that? Claws. Animal claws. That's a great one. And also animal what? Teeth. 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 
This is a raccoon skull. Yeah, a raccoon skull. So you see that tooth right there? That would be a great tool for scraping. So a lot of work to make hundreds of bowls. They would also make, look what other things they'd make. They'd make spoons. With they would also make, so they'd have to get wood, and they'd make this the same way as they made the bowl. They would scrape, scrape out that wood. Do you see how it's all black here? Yeah. They would take ashes from the fire, sit it in there and let it smolder and the wood would become soft and that would help them scrape it out. They'd also make a giant pair of what? What do you, what do you think we call these? They look like what? Pies. Good guess. They, yeah, tongs from the kitchen or tweezers. I think they look like a giant pair of tweezers. So they would make these too and you're gonna find out why in a little bit. Uh, they would also make this. Okay, looks like a basket, good guess. I'm gonna give you a hint. We use one of these in our kitchen. Good guess, it has little holes in it. Something to get to catch fish in. Oh, that's a great, like a net? That's a really good idea, right? I love that idea. A strainer? A strainer, did you ever see in the kitchen, you have one of these and you can pour water, sometimes there's pasta in the water and the pasta stays here but all the liquid comes out. Well, you're gonna see what happens. I think the Native Americans might use one of these. And then they would also make bowls, and I can't even make one, I've tried. Make bowls <laughs> out of this. Do you know what this is? Bark. 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 They would make really, really light bowls, because this is light and airy. So these are heavy bowls, and they would make light bowls out of this by making layer and layer and layer. You're gonna find out why. So a lot of work to make the tools to even start making syrup. The next step was that they were going, so we're gonna pretend again, this is our maple tree. They were going to get that sap out. So they would do what is called tapping a tree, meaning they had to open up the tree somehow to get the sap out. So they would take their, do you remember what this was called? Tom. Tomahawk. Good job, tomahawk. And they would make a big slice in the tree, a big one. And then they would take a little branch and they would stick it in that slice. And you're gonna see, as the heat from the day would warm up the tree, the maple tree, and there was a slice, the sap would start to come out and it would flow down and into, you see all these bowls that are at the bottom of the tree? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we're hoping that these bowls are gonna catch the sap. And we would put a whole bunch of bowls around this tree, because if a gust of wind comes, the wind might blow the sap around. So we'd make a whole bunch of these. We would do this, as Native Americans, to hundreds of trees. Can you imagine? We'd have to walk really far that way, really far that way. All the trees we'd have to do this to, because we wanted as much sap as we could find. Now the next thing is, we'd have to go and collect all of that sap. So some of us, we'd all have special jobs. Some of us would stay here and we'd have to make tools. Some of us would have to go collect the sap. So to collect the sap, we would go around all the trees, we'd pick up the bowls that have sap in them, and we would pour it into a big hollowed out log like this. Now this is where it gets really hard. How do you think the Native Americans would cook the sap? Now they didn't have a stove, right? And they didn't have pots. This was kind of like their pot. So they had to get this really, really hot. Now, if I take this whole log and I put it by the fire, what's gonna happen? What? It's gonna get burnt. Yeah, it's gonna get burnt and all this sap is gonna disappear. So I have to find another way to cook that sap without getting the log hot. Should we think maybe we should ask the parents? What do you think? Um, uh, we, we could pour the think? big sap <clears throat> into the stove without even, we had to mean it. Well, if there's nowhere else to pour it because we don't have a pot. Have it has idea? to stay in the log. Yeah. This is a really hard question. Should we ask the parents? The All right, sun? Parents, so the sun would help but I need it to be hotter than what the sun can give fire. us. What's that? A fire. Fire is involved, yeah, but not near here. A candle. She said hot rocks. Do you remember this giant pair of tweezers I told you about? No. So I have, oh, you weren't here for that part. Earlier, before you are here, we made a giant pair of tweezers. So 
Since we've been talking, I have had rocks in the fire. They have been getting nice and warm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the hot rocks over and put them in. Now, do you remember I said this was sap? This is mostly water and a tiny bit what? Do you remember? Sugar. 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 Excellent. Every time we put another hot rock in, some of the water is going to turn into steam and disappear. And you're gonna get to see that. Actually, Kate's gonna help us. So she's got hot rocks over there. And we're gonna see if maybe, I think the ones on the left are the colder ones. Yeah, these are good. Yeah, those are good. See, I have a lot of hot rocks. Cause you're gonna see once they go in, they get cold again and we gotta put them back on the fire. Back and forth, back and forth. You might wanna videotape this if that's an option. It's kinda cool. Oh boy. All right, hot rocks. And the rocks do sometimes break apart. So do you see all that steam? It's turning red. Yeah, and actually if you look close, you can kind of see there's some bubbles around it already. Yeah, move down this way a little bit so you can see. So we're starting to already get some bubbles. We're starting to boil. And a little bit of that water disappeared, leaving behind the sugar. So this would happen all day and all night. Hot rocks in the sap. Perfect, hot rocks in the sap. Here we go. Should I do another one? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Definitely have a little bit of a boil. Should I do another one? Yeah. Woo! Look at all of this steam coming off. We're definitely boiling. They're turning red. Yeah. But that, but that, that one's not. So do you see this process would take days, all day, all night. Hot rocks go in the sap. The cold rocks, once they get cold, go back in the fire. Back and forth, back and forth. We can hold off because I need them for the, yeah. Um, so look, we have a boil. Do you see the bubbling? It's yeah. kind of spitting up over here. We're actually boiling already. So they would do this until it turned into syrup. Now, do you think this took a long time or a short time? A long time. A long time. All day and all night, right? But finally, can you imagine how excited they were that they had syrup? So you would think that they would just drink, drink, drink the syrup. It's the winter, they're so, so hungry, right? So excited, but they didn't. They did something else. They took that syrup and they would use this. What did we say this is? A strainer and they would strain it through here because sometimes when we put them in here the rocks break so they would take the rocks out of it do you know that insects love sap so sometimes when we collect it we have ants and moths so they would strain it through here to get all of that out and then they would put it back in here and continue cooking it with the hot rocks until they had pure maple sugar. Now this is a really tough question. It was a lot of extra work to get sugar. Why do you think the Native Americans kept cooking it to get sugar and didn't stop at syrup? This is a really hard question. So they could make more? That's a good guess. You got it over here. What do you think? Um, uh, they needed the key part to eat it. Do they had enough for the whole tribe? Oh, that's a good idea. So they wanted to eat the sugar and they needed to make enough. Well, let me ask you a question. Did the Native Americans have glass jars? No. 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 Do you remember when I said they made bowls out of bark? Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you think a bowl made out of bark would hold syrup? No. Probably not. It would probably drip out. Mm. So they would make sugar because it was easier to store in a in a bark bowl and also it was lighter imagine i told you guys you have to carry everything you own on your back so you have to go into your room and just pick the things you can carry that would be hard right they only pick things that were light and sugar is much lighter than syrup so that is why we call this program maple sugaring because they were the first people to discover it and they always made maple sugar. Does the sugar uh, spoil? So eventually it could, but it lasts way longer. And usually by the springtime, when it's late in the spring, 
other food is now available, um, so it would be gone by the time spring came. They would eat about a pound of sugar a day, each one of them. Wow. Yes, a lot of sugar to survive. Yes, you have a question? They had it to keep on eating it the whole winter and keep on cooking it up. You got it. They have to keep making it and eating it because otherwise, remember, we said there's not a lot of food in the winter, right? So they needed, needed that to survive. So this goes on for a very, very long time, hundreds of years, and then all of a sudden, are you ready for the new people? Emma, and also, they kept on killing other animals for the meat. Yes, they had to eat the meat, very good. Sure. How did that affect their teeth? Oh, they did not have good teeth. Not at all. <laughs> yes, terrible. Um, but they were so excited because it was food. I mean, it was the only way they sometimes could make it through the winter. Okay, so now this is going on. Remember, we are Native Americans. We found a great way to make syrup and sugar. We're excited. We're eating. Now, all of a sudden, a new group of people show up. People that we've never seen before. They wear different clothes and they have tools. Do you know who this next group of people are? This is the awesome. pilgrims! Excellent, the pilgrims! <laughs> they came over from the other side of the ocean and they came over with the coolest stuff. So they came over with tools like this. Okay. Imagine you've never seen a bucket before. Would that be so cool? Yeah. They have this too. Do you know what this is? A it's a drill. Excellent job. So we are so excited. So we are the Native Americans and we teach these people the what we're doing. We said, look, we're going to tap a tree, we're going to cook it with rocks, and they said, wait a minute, wait. we have tools, let's make it better. So the way they made it better was... Iron tools. They used these tools, they used their metal, right? They had metal tools, very cool. So they said, instead of making the slash in the tree, and then the sap goes all over the place, let's try drilling a hole in the tree. So they would drill a hole, not too far, just enough to get to where the sap was. And then they said, we need a way to get the sap out. So they made this. Do you know what this is? No. It's like a straw, exactly. It is called a spile. And I can see you all right through it. I can see right through this. A spile. So it's just a straw and one end is a little bit smaller than the other. That's the side that I'm going to put into that hole that I drilled. So now listen to this sound. That is called tapping a tree. That tapping sound is putting the spile in. Then they said, well now we have all the sap coming out of there. What are we gonna do? Any ideas? What do you think? Shout um, it out. Put the the at the bottom. At the bottom. Great idea. Yeah. So I could put the bucket at the bottom. That's what I'll do. But I think it would be better if the bucket was closer. So I'm going to drill another hole. I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to drill a hole right above that one. And I'm going to take a little piece of wood. It's not a straw. This is just a little piece of wood. And I'm going to stick it up here. What do you think I could do with that now? Hang the bucket. Excellent. Now I'm going to hang the bucket. So do you think this is better than that? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So now we're collecting all the sap in here. But even more things got better. Do you remember when I had to walk the sap all the way over there from every tree, right? Mm. I'd pick up the bowl and walk it over. They have a better tool. What is this? You know what this is called? I don't know. Do you want to be a, a demonstrator for me? Or would you rather videotape it? Uh, Come on over. Yeah. You can go around. <laughs> Chris is going to do it? No, you volunteer. Oh. Yeah, anybody can go. Any of the adults come huh. over. Do you know what this tool is? Have you ever seen one before? You are so smart. You are right. It is called, or you tell me, what is the inside of an egg called? A yolk. A yolk. That is what this is called. So this is going to make our lives so much easier. So this is going to sit right on our shoulders. You can put your hands up top. And then someone mentioned it. What do you think I should do with that? All right, so now we're going to put the buckets, one on each side, full of sap, so don't spill any of our sap. It's very important. And now he can carry a lot more sap, and he can walk around. Can you do a spin for us? And then walk all the way over here, because 
We have a new way that we're gonna cook it because these new people brought something awesome. So you can just come right here, you can bend your knees so you don't spill that sap for us. I don't think this yolk is my size. No, it's not. <laughs> it's also very heavy. It's, yeah, it's very heavy, but it helps us move the sap. Now, remember all that cooking we did over there? Yeah. Take a look at this. The new people brought something with them. What do you see here that is going to help us? A pot. A pot. Exactly. They brought an iron kettle. What can I do with this iron kettle that I could not do with that log? Put it on fire. Put it on fire? You got it. So now I can put the sap right in here and cook it over the fire. I don't have to do that whole thing with the hot rocks anymore. Do you think this is better? Yeah. Definitely, definitely better. So through time, we've gotten better and better and better at making maple syrup, even though it's the same exact thing. It's sap that you cook down to make syrup, and then eventually you cook it more to make sugar. It's still the same, but we are getting better and better at it, yes. What, what come, what's in there? Oh, that's our garage, our wood shop. <laughs> but I've got more cool stuff out here to show you. So now I'm gonna jump all the way to today. So now we are not Native Americans, but we're still making syrup. We're still kind of doing it the same way that they did it, but we have made so many improvements. Are you ready for them? Yeah. This part's real quick. The first improvement is our tools. Check this out. Way cooler, right? Yeah. Do I have to make my tools anymore? No. Where do I get my tools? Home Depot and Lowe's. <laughs> that's how I make my tools. So that's the first part, much easier to make tools. The second thing I have to do is I have to tap the tree, remember? Just like we did here and just like they did there. I'm gonna tap it, but I'm gonna do it a little differently. I'm gonna tap it with my drill, drill a hole, and I am gonna put a straw or a spile in it, but the spiles are made out of this. Do you know what this is made out of? Metal. Metal? Good guess. Metal. We're even more more advanced than that. Plastic. What is everything made out of now? Toys? Plastic. plastic. So now we're going to make it out of plastic. But you know what? Do you remember that whole part about walking to the tree to get the sap and using the yolk that you used? Yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. So now, the way I'm going to do it. Oh, you want to help, Kate? Thank you so much. Now, I'm going to tap the tree and I'm going to put a tube in it. So you can see Kate's showing you where there's a spile in a tree at the top, a little higher. Oh, up here. Go. You're upside, upside down. down. Sorry. No, 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 you're no, not I upside am. down. I was upside you're down. <laughs> I'm looking at the bottom. So, yep, so do you see she has two spiles in the tree, straws in the tree, and then they connect to tubes. Wow, that's interesting. Hmm, what do you think we're going to do with those tubes? You got it. So now instead of going to the tree to collect the sap, the sap is going to go through tubes that get bigger and bigger and run through the forest. So now we don't have to walk to the trees anymore. Look at all those tubes. They're going to bigger and bigger tubes. Now let's see, where do you think all those tubes are going to go? Where? What do you think? Maybe to a bucket? To a jar? How about to a giant jar, a factory? Yeah, we call this factory a sugar shack. Now you can see, if you look really closely, you can see the tubes coming into the building. We Once we tap the tree, we don't even have to walk to the tree again. All the sap is gonna come downhill and it's gonna go into this building. What do you think is going on in that building? I know. What do you think we're doing? I'm uh, cooking up this cooking up all the sap and then they go into the factory and then they get mainly chicken and trucks to shop. You're absolutely, yeah, that's the answer. Good you job. Got it. We're cooking the sap inside of that sugar shack. So yeah, you can, this one's the, here, you hold the better one. Yeah. I'll hold this. So the inside are these giant machines where the sap is cooking. And Kate's gonna show you the really cool picture of sap boiling. Boiling, boiling, boiling until it gets to the perfect consistency of syrup, which is how you and I eat it today. I can't see. So here at Hoyt Farm, we kind of do a little bit of what the Native Americans did, 
a little bit of what the early settlers did and a little bit of modern day. We're gonna do a little bit of all three. Um, so I do have a part that's really cool. I want to tell you guys about what's going on inside of the tree. You wanna do that with me? Yeah! All right, to do that, Kate, do you wanna do it or should I just? You can do it, All right. Fine. To do that, I need a volunteer. Me. I saw you first, so you come all the way around. Uh -oh. <laughs> How do you feel about dressing up? Are you okay with dressing up? Yeah. Cool, come all the way around over here. Okay. All right, maybe Kate will help me with uh, this part here. I'll give you this. Okay, so before we go, what's your name? Santino. Santino, before we get to Santino, Kate's gonna help here, you bud. for a minute. I'm gonna bring you guys over here for a minute. So, we're going to get to Santino. Right now, we're looking at this tree. What kind of tree is this? A maple tree. A maple tree, very good. So, this whole side over here is the bark and the leaves. This whole side is if you could take an x-ray, if you had x-ray vision and look inside of a tree, you'll see all these tubes running up inside of the tree. They're tiny, tiny tubes. What do you think is running inside of them? Sap, excellent. The sap is inside the tree, and the tree needs that sap. That's its food, right? So we don't want to take too much. But just by looking at this tree, can you tell me what season it's in? Spring or summer. Excellent, it is summer, and I know that because the leaves are what color? Green. Green, green leaves. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something amazing. Did you know that leaves are not green? They only look green because they're covered with thousands and thousands of little green men. Guess what you are? You're one of the little green men. Come on, right up here. You know what, I'll have you stand right here so everybody can see you. So, Santino is gonna be, pretend to be one of those little green men. And they have a really big name. Do you know what they're called? Anybody, parents. Good job. So you have a giant name tag. Here's your name tag. It says, hi, my name is Chlorophyll. That's a huge name, you don't have to remember it. All it means is that he's one of these little green men and he's got thousands of friends. He has the most important job to keep a maple tree alive. He's going to make something for that maple tree. We're gonna get to it. But in order to make it, you're like a baker. You have to take in four ingredients. So I want you guys to shout it out. What does a tree need to survive? Water. water. Okay, water. water. Sunlight. Sunlight. sunlight, good job. Yeah, that's, that's, you got water. water. <laughs> yep, you're gonna see, we got sunlight. Yeah. All right, now this is when it gets hard. Two more ingredients. Weave. What was it? Weave. Leaves, we're gonna get to that. Soil. What was it? Soil. Soil. Okay, carbon dioxide, awesome job. And the last one is what? What did you say? Someone said it. Oil. It's in the soil. Nutrients. Nutrients or vitamins or minerals. Good job. It is gonna be minerals. So this is what our little chlorophyll is gonna take in. He's gonna mix them all up like a baker. There you go. <laughs> and then, just like a baker, you have to make something at the end. You're gonna make two things, you ready? Ready. He's gonna make one thing for the tree and one thing for you and me. What does he make for the tree? And I'm gonna give you a hint. It's in the sap. Water? You got it. Here, so hold your hand out, there we go. Hold your hand out. You made sugar. Nice and proud, nice and proud. There you go. Awesome. Now, that's what he makes for the tree. What do trees make for you and me? Oxygen. Yeah. Excellent. Good job. You're gonna hold this proud. Look, you made oxygen. So now this is another hard word. Parents, what do we call this process? <laughs> Photosynthesis. There's your work hat. Oh, you lost awesome. your water, bud. Oh, get the water back on. Get your water. Let's you take an anything. awesome picture. <laughs> Excellent job. Did Thank you. Get you. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, our, our Santino chlorophyll. Can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> Thank you, buddy. You did a great job. Good job. All right. I'm going to take his whole there you go. thingy off. All right, you can go back around that side. The water's still Oh, here's Santino, your hat. <laughs> okay, so that's just...
just what's going on in the summer. So we have our tree is making all those chlorophyll, and they're they're making all stuff for us to survive. But then all of a sudden, right when we're getting ready to go back to school at the end of summer, things start to change. It starts to get colder, and the days start to get shorter. And our trees notice, so they start preparing for winter. The first thing that they do is they stop making chlorophyll. That's the first thing they do. So guess what color was chlorophyll? Green. green. So guess what? All the green are gone. And what is underneath that green? Orange and yellow. All of these beautiful colors that make a maple tree a maple tree. So if someone asks you what color a maple leaf is, it's really red and orange and yellow. It only looks green because of the chlorophyll, right? So now it's almost winter and the trees say, I need to start getting ready to hibernate. And the leaves are, I don't need them anymore. They're not helpful. We don't have any more chlorophyll on them. Let's get rid of them. So now the leaves fall. And once the leaves fall, what season are we in? Fall. Wow. Winter. Winter. And the trees are hibernating, just like the animals we talked about. They go to sleep, and they're waiting, and they're waiting for the springtime. Guess what? Right now is the springtime for the trees. It still feels kind of cold to you and I, but the trees have noticed that it's starting to get a little bit warmer, and the days are getting longer so the trees start to wake up if you could believe it it's like spring to them and the way they wake up is that their sap moves from way down in their roots all the way up to the tip of their branches that is what's happening right now the sap is moving inside of a tree so here at Hoyt Farm we take what is this called do you remember the straw or the spile and we are going to put it in one of those tubes to see if we can get some sap to come out. So that's gonna be the plan today. Sound good? Okay, so one last thing I wanna show you before we go tap a tree together. I wanna show you this. And, and all of us get to go to our parents and get everything out of the tubes. We're gonna, we're gonna try. It's a little bit cold today. We're gonna hopefully see if we can get some sap to drip out. We're gonna try. But for the parents, this is for everybody, but for the parents, um, a lot of people ask, well, why are we doing this in the cold? Can't we do this in July? So this is the only time of year. It's four weeks, that's it. Four weeks long when the trees are awake, so the sap is moving, but before photosynthesis. Once photosynthesis starts, the chlorophyll is taking in minerals and minerals taste terrible. It's only four weeks, so the tree's awake and no photosynthesis. If we were to tap a tree in July, yes, we would get sap out. Yes, we could boil it down. It would make syrup, but it would taste terrible. It would taste like minerals. So it's just four weeks. All of the world's maple syrup is made in four weeks. Amazing. All right, so last question? thing I'm gonna show you before we tap a tree. So a lot of people ask why or how does the sap move up the tree, right? So to answer that, I'm gonna ask you guys, have you ever taken a brand new bottle of soda and shaken it up? Yes, no. No, no, because you get in trouble. So don't do that. But why, what is happening if you open, the, what happens if you open that bottle? It's gonna explode. It's gonna explode. Do you know why? I'm gonna give you a hint. Do you remember the four ingredients that our chlorophyll had? Yeah. One of them, it looked like a cloud. It was carbon dioxide, you got it. Inside of your bottle of soda is carbon dioxide bubbles and when you heat them up and get them excited, they move up. Guess what? There are carbon dioxide bubbles, those same bubbles in the roots of a tree. So on a really warm day, when the sun hits that tree, it warms them up and gets them to move right up the tree. So I'm gonna show you using my hand. I'm gonna to try to get my hand really warm. Imagine this is a tree in the winter, hibernating. The top here is the top of the tree where the branches are. This is the trunk and this is the roots. So right now, where is all the sap? In the bottom and the roots. So this tree is like hibernating. It's waiting for heat. So the heat of my hand is gonna hopefully push that sap all the way to the top of the tree. 
And then at night, what do you think happens? That sap goes right back down. So we need a really warm day in February, last day of February today, leap year, to get that sap to go up. So just one more time what it looks like during the day when it's nice and warm. Pretty cool, right? So warmth makes that sap move up the tree. All right, you guys ready to tap a tree with me? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, we're going to tap a real close tree. Well, what did I tell you? All right, so we're going to leave that right there. Come back, baby. And uh, do all of us get to go? Do Everyone is going to come with me, and I think I'm going to see if I can do one real close that we all can tap together. All right, so we're going to go around this way.